trying to hit 50,000 subscribers this year, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, it would mean a lot. Aviation has been a cornerstone of how we've connected and explored the globe for a significant period. Its development in what can only be described as a relatively short period has also been a sight to behold. However, equally with development have been concepts, ideas, and much more that simply never eventuated to plan for several reasons. While these concepts looking back would have been maybe in some instances shocking, but equally fascinating, they do each play an essential role in getting our beloved plane makers to where they are today, leaders in their own right in an industry that is just so fundamentally important. Through the decades of the aerospace development, there's one decade that will often catch the attention of many, and that is the era of the Super Jumbo, a period in time before we clocked over to the 2000s that every manufacturer believed it needed to stamp its authority in this sector, with their own next generation offering at the time. If you weren't Boeing, you were looking to take their market share away, and if you were Boeing, you wanted to build on the 747's long enduring success. Amid the continued Continuous growth also of long-haul travel and the new opportunities popping up left and right because of this, some ideas were presented, and equally some never quite hit with their landing and made it past the drawing board. These initiatives are labelled as ambitious, maybe even a bit ludicrous at times, but at their very core they meant well, and they were at a time what the manufacturer believed would actually be a hit and work in their favour. On the path to the 7478, which would be Boeing's last iteration of its iconic Queen of the Skies, and arguably at least for as long as we see them into the future, if that makes sense, this quad engine plane was a result of decades of planning and equally scrapped concepts. The Boeing NLA comes to mind when thinking about what could have been. You may have heard of it, you may not have, but allow me to put forward a bit of a refresher for you. The Boeing NLA, standing for New Large Airplane, was a concept aircraft proposed in the late 1990s, and even saw some discussion into the early 2000s. The premise behind the NLA was similar to other aircraft being studied at the time by even other aircraft manufacturers, and it was to address the anticipated but also more than present growing demand for large capacity airliners. More and more people were flying, and airports, you know, just can't pop up every second, and at a moment's notice they also can't expand. We're talking multi-decade processes. So, how do you relieve some of the pressure? Well, Boeing, among many others, believed that these large planes with such a high capacity were the future. The NLA did, yes, touch on the focus of ensuring that their next plane would address the continued growing market and be well positioned for the future. However, there was also belief that thanks to the various technological advancements that we'd seen in a multi-decade period up until this study, well, the NLA could potentially replace the 747 and be its successor for the long term. The hope was that with these advancements, whatever plane they moved forward with, they could adopt these technologies to make it in the end not just more accessible, but also more efficient. Essentially, these tying hand in hand, because if a plane is more efficient and more attractive, it will likely be more accessible. Lastly, the aircraft was also in response to other rival manufacturers that were studying just how they could get back at Boeing and the long-term success enjoyed through the 747 program. We know McDonnell Douglas had their MD-12 and Airbus had the A3XX. The A3XX would turn into the Airbus A380 and the world's largest passenger plane as we know, despite its efforts to not just study but also promote this concept plane. It received less attention from airlines than may be expected. The word expected is crucial concerning what Boeing thought of the said program. It was an interesting period of time, not just because manufacturers were studying these very large airplanes, but also the response that these new aircraft got. Some were responded to in a positive manner, and some frankly no. But it was clear that despite all these studies that were continuously being released by by the American plane maker, 
your airline customers who, when push comes to shove, are really the only way these concepts will actually become successful, weren't of the same mindset that the Jets were truly groundbreaking and, say, worth the significant investment to them. And this would become a theme that would obviously spark a lot of concern for the future of quad-engined planes. And why didn't the NLA succeed and why didn't it get off the drawing board more to the point? Well, let me continue with those discussions I briefly touched on around the response from airlines. While the 747 had enjoyed success, and a lot of that was through various different iterations, the times were beginning to change in the 1990s, and new twin-engined aircraft, while by absolutely no means a replacement to the 747, or even touted as a high-capacity airliner, were starting to show airlines what was possible with half the engines, and therefore at a cheaper cost. If these manufacturers could push further, say, and unveil something that would genuinely change the game in a twin-engined long-range aspect, still with a decent capacity, yes, maybe I'm looking at your 777, eventual A350, or even the 787, well, that could change the landscape for long-haul travel, and for your major airlines, provide a better landing pad for the future. That's why we'd eventually see, and despite manufacturers moving ahead with final iterations of high capacity aircraft, their success in the market never really being all that present. Don't get me wrong, did the 7478 and A380 eventually attract customers? Yes, but did they perform maybe as well as the respective plane makers would have liked? No. While Boeing was finding ways to enhance its grip on the market and do better than its 747 program, it's pretty essential to note that the NLA was not a re-engine to the 747. It was a clean sheet. And if there's one word you should associate with a clean sheet... In my opinion, it would be cost, especially with what I'm about to discuss. Clean sheets such as the 787 and even the A350 have incredible positives when they're done well, but they must be done well and there needs to be a market for the aircraft because if they're not, they can be one of the biggest financial burdens for a said customer. The NLA, if proceeded with, just thanks to its sheer size and obviously its overall scale, would cost a truckload. And with no customers firmly interested in the plane, it would have just been a endless money trap for the plane maker. Even go as far as saying that the significant resources that would have been required just from a manpower standpoint would have taken away from other vital projects, including, say, the Boeing 787. The NLA never flew and never got off the drawing board. It was also never produced, therefore, so the material we have on it is pretty far and few between, especially when it comes to imagery. But it's worth noting that this plane looked very similar in a way to the Airbus A380. It would be a full double-decker jet with four engines, and yes, would have been fantastic to see, just like so many other concepts we've seen through the years. But ultimately, it probably made a lot of sense for Boeing not to proceed with it. That being said, you could argue that studies into the NLA and its performance in the market was very important in helping Boeing eventually reach the 7478, even the 787 and other crucial aircraft types that have allowed them to continue advancing in the long-haul market. If you have any thoughts, you're more than welcome to drop them down below in the comments. Thank you so much for the support here on the channel. It really does mean a lot. Please do take care and do also be safe.